What's going on guys, this is Rob and we are back with another Invincible video. The video itself is quite literally invincible. It's indestructible because it exists in the digital space. So here's the thing. This initially opens up <laughs> with Omnipotus. This guy sucks. All right, so if you guys remember in Invincible issue number 27, this guy tried to like conquer the world but was basically destroyed. Like his world was dying. So he was trying to absorb the energies of earth and yada, yada, yada. So basically he shows back up again. And for the most part, I mean, it's cool, right? He takes out like the guardians of the globe and all that kind of stuff. And that's interesting for what it is. It doesn't really matter. Instead, you end up having Mark and dinosaurs who show up here, right? Now, here's the funny thing here. Dinosaurs is nothing if not just exceedingly resilient insofar as what he believes, right? That Mark's kind of pissed off over the fact that Dinosaurus didn't tell him earlier that his friends had basically been defeated by Omnipotus. And the response of Dinosaurus is, yeah, but like the irrigation channels that you were digging were way more important in the grand scheme of things than like your friends fighting some enemy out there, right? So I only alerted you when it was clear that we'd actually be needed. Now, when they show up here, they kind of get pummeled a little bit and then Dinosaurus basically basically bites the head off of Omnipotus and that's the end of him, right? That's basically the end of that guy, right? So again, he sucks. Like he's just, he's not interesting at all. Like literally he explodes, right? Which is kind of cool, right? All that energy just sort of just explodes outward and that's basically it. But this is when things begin to get interesting because once the other members of the Guardians of the Globe begin to wake up, remember Mark and Dinosaurus are fugitives in the eyes of the law, right? That Dinosaurus's actions led to the total destruction of Las Vegas under the idea that Las Vegas housed a whole bunch of casinos and stuff like that was a colossal waste. That because of its location, it was actually an ideal location for a huge solar array. And that using that solar array could power just a huge portion of the United States. And so following all these explosions and the destruction of Las Vegas, it actually turned the area to glass, which led to the formation of solar panels that actually had the added benefit that not only would the sun shine down directly on the panels, that it would also hit the glass and then reflect and shine on the backside of the panels. So humanity was actually able to double the energy they would get from solar panels. So sure, lots of people died, but something much better came out of their deaths. And so in response to this, Mark had actually freed dinosaurs under the idea idea that his ideas are good, but the way he goes about them are a problem. And so for the most part, Mark's basically been MIA. And so he hasn't seen Eve for quite some time. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys, Eve is quite possibly the most patient woman to ever exist in the history of the world. Like literally her man has left earth for months at a time, which sent her into a depression. She ended up having an abortion because she simply just couldn't handle everything that was going on. He's a fugitive from the law. <laughs> He's faced death. I don't know how many times and she still stays by his side. If ever there were a woman to marry Mark, this is probably it. You'll probably never do any better than this, at least not in terms of a woman with patience. And so because of all that, there's this huge conversation that happens between the two, right? Eve was never on board with the idea of Mark basically taking off, becoming a, a vigilante, a fugitive, working alongside dinosaurs because of what had happened in Las Vegas. But Mark creates a really, really cool counter argument here, right? He says the ideology the, the practicality of the things that dinosaurs believes, they're good things, right? There are huge sections of the world that are being wasted on things that don't matter, right? We have kind of allowed that to go on because, you know, despite what we say and do, we don't really want things to change. And if we do want things to change, we want them to change without having to actually put any effort in, right? The greatest reward for the least amount of work. And so with this in mind, Mark's like, the way he does things, sure, destroying Las Vegas is a problem. You get no argument from me there right? But the ideologies he have, they work. And so Mark's whole position here operating alongside dinosaurs is actually to basically be a, a kind of conscience in the sense that when dinosaurs is like, okay, so we should eradicate France so we can, we can turn the catacombs into like something that can benefit the whole of humanity. Then like the response of Mark is no dinosaurs, we should not eradicate France, but we can work with the French military or the French government to do something with the catacombs, but we shouldn't eradicate the whole of France, right? I mean, there's a better way to do this, right? It's just that kind of a thing, right? That kind of a system. And so in the middle of all this, Cecil shows up, of course, as you would basically expect. Now, the funny thing here is that Cecil didn't bring an entire army. And he even says that, right? Like I didn't bring the guardians of the globe. I didn't bring like a giant squadron with me, which I could have done if my goal was to apprehend you. Instead, I just basically want to talk to you. And that's one of the funny things here is that when you look at Cecil as a character, sure, he does some pretty shady stuff, but in his mind, it's all part of the greater good. Now I would say him
him showing up here to Mark is really him still trying to maintain some aspect of that kind of mentor role where he's like, look, man, I get where you're coming from, but here's the problem. You sound so naive, right? This idea that you can take someone like dinosaurs who had this plan to, to wipe out the total, the totality of Las Vegas, right? All those people died. The fact that you can control this guy, right? This guy dinosaurs who basically wiped out the entirety of Las Vegas and those people were evacuated by, by just an inch from total destruction. You believe that you can contain and control this guy. Mark, you're naive. Now that's the other part of Cecil. And it's one of the reasons why, and, and there's really justification here for Mark not necessarily trusting Cecil in this way. The reason being because one of the things that Cecil will do despite the fact that he seems to be operating under what he believes to be the right thing to do. It's one of those instances when he would do some shady stuff. He would basically gaslight Mark, right? No, 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 it's, it's not, you know, and basically mess with his head and screw with him and then trick him into believing that Cecil's the only one who can basically contain uh, dinosaurs. And then he would use dinosaurs for his own ends, which was most likely what they were going to do in the first place. Of course, as they kept him contained, they kept the dinosaurs personality at bay. But then once they figured out what it was they wanted to do or they approached dinosaurs, or they had something to offer that would get dinosaurs to work with them, then they would have gone forward from there. And so that lack of trust is a little bit justified as far as Mark goes. Now, of course, in the middle of this conversation, he's basically told that Alan the alien is showing up on Earth. And so, of course, Mark takes off to meet Alan the alien. Now, here's the funny thing about this, right? What happens here is exactly what happened in the last video, right? Where basically Mark stands against what it is that Alan the alien wants to do, where he basically tells him, look, I've devised a plan where I'm going to release the Scourge virus on Earth. There is a chance, Mark, it could destroy the entire of your race, but we know it'll destroy all the Viltrumites. So at the end of the day, the death of your of everybody on your world is a small price to pay to save the universe. Here's the funny thing about this, right? This is one of those instances where Mark, like you, like me, like many of us, we're selective on, on the nature of our morality. We pick and choose what we want to be moral about and how far we let that morality go. Here's what I mean by this. What Alan the alien is doing here, what he's proposing is no different than what Dinosaurus is proposing, right? Dinosaurus argues that like there are times when because of the goal and the nature of things that they want to achieve, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. So if all those people in Las Vegas had died, it'd be a small price to pay. Sure, I mean, I guess it sucks, but to like save the world or to like protect the world, that's just the way that it goes, right? And while Mark kind of curtails that to a little bit, it's also Mark being basically hypocritical here because how many fights has Mark engaged in in populated places where buildings were destroyed, buildings collapsed on people, where people were killed, and it was collateral damage. Yet Mark continued to operate as a superhero in that capacity, knowing that kind of thing would take place. That he didn't really try to lead people away, he would just end up in a conflict there. And so the lack of desire to lead people away from populated areas during fights, right, to move the villains elsewhere on the other side of that equation is saying, yes, I know people are going to die here. I don't care. And so that basically leads to people being killed as collateral damage. But then suddenly when Alan the alien comes along and says, okay, Mark, so your morality, right? Your utilitarian approach that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, that this is a localized situation, right? It's how you operate here on earth. I'm looking at it on a grander scale and it could lead to the destruction of your entire race. Then suddenly it becomes a problem. It's not a problem until Mark arbitrarily arbitrarily decides that it is a problem. And that's kind of how we as humans function when it comes to morality, right? We pick and choose what's important. We pick and choose what is or is not the right thing to do. And it waxes and wanes. In this instance, Alan the alien is saying, look, the whole of the universe is facing a threat by the continued existence of the Viltrumite race. You're hoping that you can reform them, that you can turn them into good people, but there's no guarantee that's going to happen. And because of the fact that they represent a clear and present danger to the universe, they have to die. And because you allowed them to merge with your planet, you brought this on yourself. It's harboring a fugitive who won't leave your house. That person's gotta go. Looks like you gotta go with them. And this is one of those things where Mark and, and really his family, right? So like Mark, Nolan, all those guys had to consider this as some kind of a possibility. There's no conceivable way that this grand plan was constructed without acknowledging the possibility someone will come looking for them and someone will try to destroy them. And when that happens, they may destroy us at the same time. It's just kind of a willful ignorance with that part of the equation. And so much like you would expect from Nolan, Mark stands in his way and is like, no, that's not going to happen, right? Like I'm not going 
going to let you release the scourge virus on our world and potentially destroy the whole of humanity, right? I would rather that the Viltrumites potentially be, you know, go back to their role of being a race that would try to conquer the universe than let 7 billion people die. It's one of those kind of backwards morality clauses, right? It's one of those backwards moral concepts where it's like the needs of the few outweigh the needs of the many. It doesn't really make any sense when you start looking at it that way, right? When you strip away the emotional component and you look at it from a logical perspective, it makes no absolute sense. I mean, sure, it sucks that 7 billion people on earth will die. That's a small price to pay. Sorry about your luck, Mark. I mean, that's just the way it goes, right? How many countless people out there die in wars and conflicts that you never think about, right? If you're arguing this from like the value of life, that value must not matter too much because you don't really give a second thought to anybody else out there that dies from any number of conflicts. So again, arbitrarily creating moral standards to fit whatever desire we want to see fulfilled. And so this basically leads to a fight breaking out between the two. Now, again, Alan the Alien is pretty far above Mark. Mark's not on the same level as Alan the Alien, and he gets absolutely pummeled, right? I mean, he gets absolutely trashed. And it's one of these things where like the whole time that it's going on, Alan's like, you're wasting time, right? Now, Mark's whole stance is like the people on this world, like on this planet, you know, all those individuals, they're innocent people. They don't deserve to die. And it's not as though Alan the Alien is condemning them because he's vindictive. Mark and his family put them in the crosshairs. They put them there. They put them in that position. They had humanity intermingle with the Viltrumite race, knowing something like this could happen at a future point in time. If they didn't want that to happen, they shouldn't have done this in the first place, right? It's creating their own problem and then complaining about the consequence of that problem. And so ultimately in this huge conflict, this huge battle that goes on between the two, the question that Alan the Alien asks is, Nolan could not stop me. Your father could not defeat me, Mark. What chance do you think you have? And then, boom, out of nowhere comes Freddie Mercury, Thrag himself, who says he has me. With that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.